Good morning and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to all our young people who are viewing our worship this morning from the Youth's Corner. Praise God that you have taken this time to worship with us this morning. Praise God, whether it may be from your cell phone, whether it may be from your laptop, your tablet, we praise God that you're tuning in. Whether you be from our various Auckland Seventh-day Adventist churches, whether you be from our churches up north, our Tongan church in Gisborne, or our churches in the South Island, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. Let us firstly acknowledge the presence of our Heavenly Father, especially during this time of COVID-19. We acknowledge Him for the many blessings that He has blessed us with. We acknowledge Him because of the love that He continues to shower both on you and I. We also want to pause during this time and acknowledge Pastor Belikani and his family. We understand that it is a difficult time for you, Pastor. And it is our prayer that the Holy Spirit continues to be with you and your family in this sad time, uh, especially with the loss of your father. It is our prayer that God continues to dwell within you and strengthen you uh, in his ministry. Before we carry on, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time of worship. We thank you for allowing we as young people uh, to connect with you, Father. It is a difficult time right now, but we invite the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we can worship with you, Father. We love you, Lord, and we need you now more than ever. Be with us, Father, and we ask all these gracious things in your beautiful name. Amen. We've entitled the word this morning as Be Bold. We've entitled the word as Be Bold. I mean, it is a difficult time living in the era of COVID-19. You're probably wondering to yourself, what does it mean to be bold in this era of coronavirus? I mean, we can see the uncertainty in a lot of our families. Daily on the news, we are hearing reports of people being sick with COVID-19. And around the world, many of our dear friends and families are dying. We can only look at our own government with the struggles that they have. Around the world, there is economic downfall that is affecting everybody from the biggest companies to the smallest local businesses. We can only look around us in our societies to see that people are trying their very best to make ends meet. The unemployment rate in New Zealand is slowly rising again. It is an uncertain time. But what does it mean for we as Christian young people to be bold in this time? What is our purpose in this time? In the last couple of weeks, we have been seeing a lot of talks regarding prophetic time, the prophetic ending, and prophetic messages. Today, we'll be discussing what it means to be bold enough to stand up for Christ in these prophetic times. But before we go any further, let us watch this video quickly. What would happen if every day you set an alarm on your phone before you go to class, before you go to work, before you go wherever, whatever you do, you took a few moments and just said, God, make me bold today. May I have the faith to believe that you'll show up and do what only you can do. Make me bold. Give us unshakable spiritual convictions, that we have the courage and the faith to obey you no matter what the personal cost. God, even though it may be painful, make us bold. But God's encouraging you today to step out and be bold enough to follow the leadership of God for your life. 
And it never ceases to amaze me what God enables a person to do if they will just step out. Question for you. How amazed are people by your boldness? When they look at you, would they say, oh, undoubtedly, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you are a disciple, a follower of Jesus. Or would they say, you are a Christian, really? There's innumerable ways the Holy Spirit may prompt you to be bold. You may just be in a conversation with someone and suddenly you feel urged to ask them, do you mind if I pray for you? And you're not even comfortable praying out loud, but the next thing you know, you're calling heaven down and believing by faith for the power of God to touch this hurting person right in front of you. You may be in a meeting and there's something that's inappropriate and you just very lovingly and appropriately say, now let's not do that, we can be better than that. And you might be bold. You might be bold when everyone else is gossiping against someone and trash talking it and you just don't participate or you walk away or even bolder, you say, come on. Look, let's be better people than that and you just step in. You might see someone that's, that's hurting and say, hey, I'm coming to bring you to church this week. I'm not just inviting you, I'm bringing you. There's a difference between inviting and bringing. Some of you, you've been kind of inviting, but you start to bring. You know what, but guess what? This weekend we're going to church and you invite someone. There are so many different ways that God might manifest himself through the power of the Holy Spirit. It takes bold faith to be a Jesus person these days. And I wanna encourage you and let it be known in your circle of influence with your friends and your neighbors and your family members and your coworkers. You're with Jesus. It's important, they need to know people like you love Jesus. Bold faith. God needs bold people today. He needs people who will stand up for him, whether it be in big things or small things. But God needs people who will make a stand for him. You see, boldness can be risky business. But if we do it on our own, when we have the understanding that God leads the way, we can follow him without fear. Because we know that everything is in God's control. He goes before us. And we know that all things are in God's capable hands. I'm reminded of one of my favorite Bible texts. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. It reads, Do not fear for I am here. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The sentence, do not fear, is mentioned in the Bible 365 times. There is 365 days in the year. God is seriously implying, be bold and do not fear. I'm reminded of the story of Queen Esther. As she demonstrated great boldness, when she approached the throne of King Xerxes, Beforehand, she mentions, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. What a great role model for women of any century. Before she put her life on the line to save her people, she wisely asked them to fast and pray that she might be given favor by the king. What a time to be alive in the era of Esther. To stand firm and boldly. To go break the law and see the king. When we stand boldly for Jesus, we face many difficulties. But we praise God that in every difficult situation, there is an opportunity because his hand is very, very near. You see, queens, they aren't the only bold ones or bold souls in Scripture. When the disciples prepared to share the gospel, they prayed, Enable your servants to speak with your word with great boldness. 
You see, they knew they couldn't drum up boldness on their own. So they called to God to help them to be unafraid and unapologetic. You see, the Lord quickly answered. Acts chapter 4 verse 31, it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke like the word of God boldly. See, boldness is really about God. Boldness is not about us. We cannot do things on our own. One of my favorite authors of all time, Ellen G. White, she quotes, The greatest want of the world is the want of men, men who will not be bought or sold, men who in their inmost souls are true and honest, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name, men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole, men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. Young people, may we be bold today. May we view things from the perspective of Christ. May we be as bold as Esther, as bold as the disciples, as bold as Jesus, sacrificing his life for you and I. If there is one thing I am certain about, the end is very, very near. And you and I need to stand and make that firm, bold decision for Jesus today. Yes, we will face difficulties. There will be trials along the way. There will be mountains that you and I will have to face. But if there's something I can guarantee to you, from the verse that we read out previously, that God is always near, that He has given us His glorious, His righteous right hand, so that you and I can be saved. It is my prayer this morning that you make a firm stand and remain bold for Jesus. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to bless his church. That is my prayer. In God's precious and glorious name, may God bless you. Let us pray. Lord, may we come closer to you. May we remain bold in you, Lord Jesus. May you touch our lives today. May we give ourselves to you as living sacrifices daily. May you use us, Father, to preach your good message, especially in these end days, these difficult days. Be with us, Lord Jesus, and we pray and ask all these glorious things to your mighty name. Amen.